Tonight on Super Nanny, Joe meets the Burnett family. Hello, pleased to meet you. Gonna shake Jojo's hand. Whose two sets of twins, all under the age of three, keep their parents' hands full. Where's the baby? I don't have time to hold you, honey. With a stay-at-home dad pulling double duty in the morning. Rich, I gotta call you back one minute, okay? And a working mom who takes charge at night. Joe steps in to lighten the load. What he's doing is hoping that you'll give in and just pick him up. And turn their frustration into fun. <laughs> Take a look and see who we've got here. Hi, I'm Joanne. And I'm Michael. We're the Burnettes. I'm self-employed general contractor who works most days from home. I'm a teacher. I work Monday through Friday, 7 to 3. What a juggle. We have five children. My oldest boy, Zachary, my eight-year-old, I have joint custody with his mother, so Zachary's here on certain days. Then we have John and Joseph, identical twins, three years old. And lastly, Michael and Molly, 16-month-olds. Two sets of twins. They have got their hands full. Life before the twins was wild and crazy. We ate out every night, we traveled, and uh, we were never home and always had a great social life. Oh. I'm home during the day with the children most days. Is there anyone in the building inspector's office I can talk to today? I need to be able to speak with people, and four children running around at once makes that impossible. Hey, I'm sorry, I forgot I had you on hold all that time. What I pretty much do is I just try to wing it. Don't touch, Michael. No! Just trying to make it till 3.30 when Mom comes home. Mommy's home. Hey! Usually there's only one person here with all the children at one time. There's not enough time in a day to give each child their own individual attention. No, Molly, hold you. Hold you? I only have two hands. When did Dad and Mom get a break? I never expected life to be like this. And we're looking forward to college. <laughs> How do they handle this day in and day out? And I would love to be able to bring in someone to help us out, like an au pair. But I refuse. They're my children, and I will take care of them, and I'll sacrifice what I have to sacrifice to uh, raise them my way. Hmm. Oh, oh, what happened? They need another set of hands. Super Nanny, our life is chaos. Please, Super Nanny, get here soon. This family clearly needs help, and I'm on my way. Ah, oh, the doorbell. Hello. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. Yeah, pleased to meet you, Joe Frost. Nice to meet you, Joe Frost. Michael Burnett. What's your name? This is Molly. Hi, Molly. Hello, Molly. <laughs> Say hello. Sweeties. My first impression of Joe when she walked through the front door was I thought she was very cute, uh, very English, and uh, I had a great first impression from her. Who have we got here? <laughs> this is John. Hi, John. Pleased to meet you. I'm going to shake Jojo's hand. Pleased to meet you, John. And who's this over here? That is John's twin brother, Joseph. Hi, Joseph. Hello. This over here is Michael. Aww. Say hello, Michael. Hello. Hiya. <laughs> and it's breakfast time. Breakfast time. OK. Yes. Well, today I'm here just to watch you okay. and all your children. OK. OK, so I'm going to step back and just carry on as normal as you would during your day, okay? okay? So I can take mental notes and observe you guys. Okay. All right? You want peanut butter, John? Yeah. Okay. What time do the children wake up, Michael, in the morning? They wake up usually between 9 and 10. And is this normal time for the children to have breakfast? Normal time. At 11 o'clock? Yep. They eat breakfast between 10 and 11 normally. When I came in, it was gone 10 o'clock and the children were having breakfast. And um, I thought that was quite peculiar, that the children were eating breakfast so late in the morning. <laughs> Do you so, see the little ones going? Be careful with the peanut butter. Yeah. 
<laughs> Honey, you can't eat the peanut butter like that. It's too thick. See, but as you can see with so many of them, where's the baby? Where's Michael? Hello. All right, look, I got the babies in my hand. I'm going to call you back in a few minutes when I can talk. He's climbing up the stairs, Michael. Mikey. Come on, honey. Oh, there he is. Mikey. Mikey. Dad, you can't hold your hand. I have the babies. Here, hold my pants. You need to be an octopus, Dad. Yes. <laughs> Joseph, Daddy cannot hold you right now. Daddy, work. Hello? Joseph, I can't hold you right this second, honey. Dad's got his hands full. He's got two sets of twins, and that's hard work. At the same time, he also holds down a full-time job. It's crazy. I don't know how he manages to do that. Hello? I haven't had a chance to check my messages. Well, I must say, as a nanny, it's incredibly hard to uh, not want to give you a hand. <laughs> <laughs> In the morning, it's chaotic. I don't know that there's any solution other than, hey, get help. <laughs> you know what I mean? Michael's got more than enough on his plate. He's trying to manage his children and maintain his business. It's putting an enormous amount of pressure on Michael. I've talked to my wife about an au pair, yeah. sent away for the information. Yeah. I wanted to do the au pair, and uh, my wife felt that she likes her privacy. I think Joanne's being very unrealistic. So what happens now, Michael? It's 12 o'clock. Yeah, I'm going to put Michael and Molly in now for a nap. Oh, hey. Kids have just woke up. They've not even played yet. It's back to sleep again. <sighs> My goal is I need to make it through till 3.30 till help arrives. What's your buyer? What are they putting in there? A church? but we have to throw in. I cannot believe that Dad puts Molly and Michael down for a three-hour nap when they've only been up for two hours. It's ridiculous. It's obvious he does it because it's convenient for him and his work schedule. Which one you want, Lion King or Snow White? Snow White, OK. It didn't take long for me to realise that Michael didn't have any structure in his day because he just kind of babysat the kids really, watched them. Well, thank our lucky stars for Snow White. Children need stimulating in the morning. They were like just kind of hanging out in the house and they look bored. Guys! Who's that? Hi! What you doing? Mikey, give me kisses. Give me kisses. Hey, I didn't want to break your moment. Pleased to meet you, Joe. Joanne, nice to meet you. Meet you. Did they have lunch, Mike? No. Yeah, so you're making lunch now? Yes. Not dinner? No. Right, OK. Lunch. This will be lunch for Michael and Molly. Bye. See you. The minute Mum got home, Dad handed the kids off to Joanne and took care of his business. So a lot is happening right now than what it was when Dad was looking after the kids. There's no balance in this house. In the morning, they're all sleepy, there's no stimulation. And then in the afternoon, they're like live wires. And everything comes after half past three when Mum gets home. Come here. Hey, hey. I'm coming. All right, Molly. Mikey, no, no. What, honey? All of Joanne's children want to be picked up all the time because every time they do put their arms out, they get picked up. So it's what they've learnt. She's balancing one child on each hip. Don't do that, John. You're going to get hurt, honey. Do you dress the kids the same? Yes, I'm a little bit fanatical about that. So if one gets something dirty on their shirt, you change all two of them? All three of them. Oh, your piggy toes are stuck. Wait a minute, Mom. OK, what are you going to play next? Joseph? 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 No, no. Joseph, look at me. Do not do that again. Whilst the children were playing in the playroom, Joseph decided to pull the plug out from the keyboard. Hi. Joseph, you do it again, you're going in timeout. You, do you hear me? Mum had told him not to, but he didn't listen. <gasps> so what's happening now? He's going to go on timeout. He's going to sit on a step for three minutes. Naughty step, I think I know that one. Come on, Joseph. <laughs> Joseph! 
Uh oh, what happened? Mummy will fix it. And um, Joseph was allowed to carry on playing. If that's discipline, then there definitely isn't any in this household. My big question I've got to ask you is, have you ever hired anybody like myself? No. Why? Why not? I wouldn't put them in daycare right now. Um, I just never felt comfortable leaving them with someone that's not their family. I just feel like they're my kids, and I want to take care of them. So what time do you guys get to eat tonight? We just oh discussed that. <laughs> we said once we get the kids to bed, we'll order something. Yeah. And uh, I'll pick it up or we'll have something delivered. Yeah. Daisy, you wanted me to eat it? Yeah. What? Eat it. From the minute Joanne walked in the door from work, I never saw the woman take a break. So the kids love their bath. <laughs> they do. Good. Hey, Mommy reminds you to say. <laughs> you are clean. And dried up all the. Oh. Oh. <laughs> right, so, Mum, this is when the housework begins. This is it. All the kids are in bed. This is when I start cleaning up. The mess that was made today. I want to be in my office, Joanne. Okay. So, Mum, do you do all the housework then at this time of night? Yes. While Dad's in the office? Yes. No help? No. Mum told me she's got at least three hours of housework. That's going to take her up to midnight. And that woman's been on the go since she's walked through the door. That's a long day. Do you want to see you bright and early tomorrow morning? All right. All right. I work too hard. You'll never get to bed at this rate. No. Bring me a woman who's happy doing house chores at half past nine at night for three hours, because I'd really love to meet them, because I know I wouldn't be happy. When I first meet a family, I observe carefully, take mental notes, and watch the dynamics of a family and how they interact with one another. OK, Joanne and Michael, I've watched, I've seen, so let's go and have a chat in the other room, OK? I was very nervous about someone coming into my house and giving me advice. I don't know what she has up her sleeves. I'm actually scared to death. How fantastic. You've got two sets of twins under the age of three. And I've really got to take my hat off to you because it really is a lot of hard work. Thank you. Joanne, you work as a teacher. And Michael, you work at home. But at the same time, you're also at home with your children. But there is a lack of balance with what you are both trying to achieve as parents. And your children are suffering for that. The routine is Michael's routine. You have a schedule that works for you so that you can pick up the phone, deal with work, and make sure that you look after the children. Correct. But you're not using your time effectively because when you are with them, you watch over them rather than interacting with them. Yes, I agree. I can see that. Yes. The children sleep so many hours during the day. But rest from what? It's, it's convenience. It is convenience. It is convenient, yes. Dad loves it when they sleep. I get more work done when they're sleeping. But at the same time, Joanne, Michael's trying to hold down a job as well as manage four kids under the age of three years old because nobody else is allowed to do it. Why? I'm just not comfortable. Next to me, being here, he's the next best thing. You see the pressure that, that now creates for Michael? You come home from work and your afternoon from 3.30 to bedtime is really based on compensating for what lacks during the day. But it becomes overwhelming. Let's talk about the children's independence. John and Joseph, 
should. And I say should. Know how to put them trousers on, that shirt on and those shoes. So that they can feel a sense of, of pride. So that they can become independent. But mummy, mummy, daddy, daddy, hands up all the time, on your hips 24 seven, is treating them like babies. And on another note, Michael, it wouldn't hurt you to make life a little bit easier for Joanne. Why can't you put the plates in the dishwasher? Joanne handles the traditional things that women do, and I handle the traditional things that men do. We are living in 2005. The pair of you could get those chores done and you could have an evening together. You have to be more than willing to take a leap. And that's why I'm here, to be able to help you as a whole, as a family. I think that she hit a lot of points that I already knew. When she told Michael he needed to step up and help out a little bit, I thought that was good. So, are we ready to get started? Yes. Yes? Ready for the hard work? Yes. <laughs> Good. All right. Yes. Well, let's get started then. It makes me very nervous. Uh, something about that grin she had at the meeting when she said, are you ready to go to work now? Or something to that effect. I'm bringing a new routine into the Burnett house. It's going to give them complete structure to their day. They don't have that, so it's going to be really good for dad, mum and all the children. The family routine. All right. We're going to get the children up at a decent time and have them up at 8 o'clock. Between 8.30 and 9 o'clock, we're going to give the kids breakfast. All right? Okay. Between 9.30 and 10.30, we're going to do managed play. 12.30 to 2.30, it's Molly and Michael's nap time. And it's a, it's a relaxing time after lunch. You can get on with work and just clear up from lunch, which does mean putting the plates in the dishwasher. <laughs> can we do paper plates? <laughs> At 3.45 to 4.30, Mum, into the playroom and have some fun with the kids. You've not seen them all day. 4.30 to 5 o'clock, start to prep dinner. Mum and Dad evening. It means you've got your evening earlier than what you were having. This family routine in place for your household gives you structure. And the children need that. It makes them feel secure because they know what's coming next. It looks like we're going to have them busy enough that it should flow smoother. Brilliant, so let's give it a go as soon as possible. Let's start it rolling. Yes. Looks good. I think that the schedule will definitely make things less chaotic for us. If we get more time to spend together at night, I think it will be wonderful, and I am looking forward to that. I just hope we don't create any more twins. <laughs> Joanne can't possibly get what she needs to get done during the day when she's got two children stuck either side of her. So when this happens, where he wants to be picked up all the time, I want you to talk to him at eye level and say to him, look, mummy's going into the playroom, you've got a choice. You have mummy's hand or you can come in on your own. What he's doing is hoping that if he cries long enough, you'll give in and just pick him up. <laughs> Joseph, listen to me, listen. Mommy's going into the toy room. You can walk in. Well, when mommy's here, you can walk in by yourself. What do you want to do? Okay, so then put him to the side. So put him to the side. And then take Molly, and we're going to the playroom. And then take Molly by the hand. Move him out the way. You want to hold mommy's hand? Okay, so mommy, go. We're going to the toy room. Come on, Molly. They'll follow you through. When Joseph started crying, the first thing I wanted to do was pick him up, and it was absolutely breaking my heart and the most difficult thing I've, I've done in a long time. So, with him realising that you're not going to be picking him up 24, you put me into the playroom because you want to play with him, OK? So it's say, let's go and get your toys there, let's play together, OK? Joseph, what toys do you want to play with? Doesn't want to, so he's not listening to you, OK? So he's thinking, how come now Mummy doesn't want to pick me up when it was OK before? But what you need to do is to go back to square one and start encouraging Joseph and John to be more independent. Mum had to prepare dinner, so I said to her, explain to Joseph where you're going 
and go into the kitchen. Mommy's going to the kitchen right now to make dinner. I'm going to put Molly in her chair. If you want, Mommy will hold your hand and you can come into the kitchen with me. I was explaining to Joanne that whilst Joseph was having a temper tantrum, that she was just to ignore him and get on with what she needed to achieve, and that was to feed her other children, because it was dinner time. Some peaches. You want a big boy for us tonight? Excellent. All right, let me get you juice. Look, remove him. Mummy needs to get what she needs to get. You're not going to hurt him. He knows that you love him. Eventually, Joseph calmed down, but then he didn't want to eat, and so Mum had to give him a warning. Joseph, you need to sit down on a chair and eat dinner. Not you need to. OK, this is what we're doing, Joanne. All right? Joseph, I want you to listen to Mummy and do as you're told and sit down and eat your dinner, please. If you do not listen to Mummy, you will go and sit on the naughty chair for not listening. Now, up you get, please. So, I explained to Joanne the naughty chair technique. She went to put him on it, and he went mad. <laughs> so, he went on the chair to move him away. Look, watch this, look. Joanne, this is temper. Joseph, Joseph, you didn't listen to Mummy. Now, you stay here, please. You stay there. Come away, up, up. I did trust Joe in the situation, but I find it difficult to have someone else discipline my kids. I need to know what you're feeling and, 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 and why. It was tough for me to talk to Joe at that point because I was on a verge of tears. I didn't want to listen. I didn't, I just wanted to pick him up. Why do you want to pick him up? What, what is it, Joe? Because he's crying. What does that cry say to you? I hope he's not thinking I'm ignoring him. I just think if I was to pick him up for a couple minutes, he would be okay. I'm not saying that you can't cuddle and, and pick your boys up every now and then, but so that they're not using their tempers to force that on you all the time, OK? I want you to go back now and say to Joseph, Mummy, put you on this naughty chair because you didn't listen to me, OK? I want you to go and sit down on the chair and eat your dinner, please, OK? All right? Well, you didn't listen to Mummy, OK? So I'm going to walk you over and you're going to get on a chair and eat your dinner, OK? Come on. I think the whole tantrum lasted for about an hour, and Joseph did cry the entire time. It felt like an eternity. Good boy, Joseph. Yay, we clap! Yay. Mom, this is a big achievement. Well done, look. How'd you feel? Huh? Now I feel good. So you should. Well done. Well done. I arrived at 8.30 sharp this morning to see if Dad was on schedule. Good morning, Joe. How are you? Good morning. John, good morning, Joseph. How are you? Dad, give me five. Look at you. Oh, the sun's <laughs> shining. It's a beautiful I'm day. I'm you, and you're on time. <laughs> Look at this. It was fantastic. Dad was up. The boys were having breakfast. He was on time with that schedule. He did a good job. I was pleased to see that Joe had a smile on her face once she walked in and saw that I was, in fact, sticking to her plan and giving this a, a, real, a real shot. After breakfast, I saw Dad put plates in the dishwasher for the first time. Very impressive. First thing I wanted to work on with Dad this morning was the big boy technique, and that was to allow Joseph and John to do things for themselves. OK, so what I want you to do is... Come on over here, Joseph. Bring the boys over. This is the big boy technique. And it's okay. like, right, we're going to have some fun with Daddy and we're going to play in a minute. But what we need to do first is get ourselves dressed. So he told the boys they were going to get themselves dressed. Can you do it? Yeah. You can do it. You're a big boy. You can do it. And they roasted the challenge. Come okay. on, pull it down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, good job. You hold it like that and wiggle your feet through. So they started to get themselves dressed and pop their head through their t shirts and put their arms through, and they were really proud of themselves that they achieved that. Wow, Tully! Oh. I think they had fun with it. I think it was a good idea. <laughs> you did it. Well done, John. Good job. Well done.
In the morning, I explained to Dad that we were going to do managed play because Dad normally just sits there and watches them. Choo -choo. So, Daddy, they're set up with the card games. And then what I want you to do with Michael and Molly is to do this shape sorter. I gave Michael new games to stimulate the children to sit down with them and engage them in those activities. That's the what? What is that? The sun. The sun, that's right. That's the sun. And then to step back and yo-yo yourself between the younger twins and the older twins. Yeah. And you flip from one to the other, yo-yo, one to the other, OK? Yeah. So that they've got their individual toys for their right ages. Is that a butterfly? Yeah. Oh, that's a turtle. That's a turtle? Yeah. Michael, you're managing the four kids fantastic, OK? You're stimulating all of them, and at the same time, they're playing with different activities. Children are cooped up in that house too long, too many hours, so we all went outside to play. We had a great time. The kids loved the swings. They got to climb, run around, play. My plan is to continue with the outside playtime. The kids need the fresh air. I agree with Joe. Hold on. That is fast. Any faster, you're going to do loops. Whilst we were all outside playing, Mum came home and she joined us. And she had a big smile. She was very pleased to see we were outside playing. Hello! Who's hey there? Guys. Normally for them, it's like a shift change. As soon as Joanne comes home, Michael's out the door. Today, I, I had no desire to do that. I stuck around. I, I enjoyed it. It was a great time. So I'm leaving you guys for a couple of days. These are your pointers. Stick to the routine because it's working beautifully. And big boy technique. We've got two big boys here. So keep encouraging them to put their clothes on. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Well, I hope that Joanne and Michael use the techniques Bye, correctly. Dad. Treat Joseph and John like big boys. And I'm going to be watching them. Good boys. Oh boy. Daddy's not holding you. <laughs> Daddy's not holding you. I don't have time to hold you, honey. Look at the big boy technique. Get your shirt off. Taking their clothes off by themselves. Lots of encouragement. Got it. There you go. Good boy. <laughs> hey, you did it. This is very encouraging to see. How's that bagel? Breakfast at 9.30. That's too late. Joseph, you want some strawberries? It's almost snack time, you guys. Let Daddy get Molly. An hour later, now you're giving him a snack? Daddy, make you make your mess. Yeah, I know. This is supposed to be a snack. You guys aren't, eat aren't eating too much. What's wrong? You're not hungry today? The children aren't even playing. All they're doing is eating. You're filling them up again. Here's your cracker. Too much food going on here. The kids are playing. They got another 25 minutes of playing before lunch. They haven't stopped eating all morning. Listen to me. Once Joseph knocks the ice down, it's your turn. Once John knocks a piece down, it's Joseph's turn, OK? Yeah. You're not supposed to knock the man down. Oh, this is nice to see. The boys are playing a game. You knock it down, then it's John's turn. You didn't knock it down yet, John. It's Joseph's turn still. Now let's see them take turns. OK, Joseph's turn. John. John. Oh, John. You've ruined it for Joseph. Mommy's Amanda. Look at me. If you do it again and you don't take turns, Mommy's going to put the game away. You can't take the game away from them both. Joseph was playing nicely. It's not fair. <laughs> Listen to me. You hurt your sister. You are sitting here. Do not get up and do not move this chair. Do you understand me? Right, now you've told him, walk away. Get on with what you've got to do. Sit down. She didn't break it. Sit down, John. All right, I'm calling a super nanny. I'm calling her. I'm going to tell her you're not sitting. I can't believe you're calling for me. You should be doing this yourself. Don't think because I'm preoccupied right now that you're not going back. So I need to show you more. You're not being consistent. Hello. Hi. Hello there. Good to see you. 
It's a learning process for the Bennett family and the best part of that step is the DVD process. I've got some footage that I'd love you guys to have a look at, so follow me through, let's take a look. Daddy's not holding you. Daddy is not holding you. There you go, good boy. This is good, the big boy technique. So hats off to the pair of you in allowing them to be independent, but also so they're not attached to you 24 seven. So well done. Let's carry on and see more. Joseph, you want some strawberries? It's just supposed to be a snack. You guys aren't eating too much. What's wrong, you're not hungry today? Can't really blame Michael, to be honest with you. He's probably stuffed. He's had breakfast. He's now he's had a snack, but I think, oh, I'm just a bit too bloated here. Put it on the floor. Can't blame the poor fella. Question mark why the schedule's running late. That schedule is important to the pair of you and your children. But if for some reason those children were not on schedule, common sense would say that if they're up late and they've had breakfast, skip out that snack. And the quantities here are too big. Okay. Once Joseph knocks the ice down, it's your turn. Once John knocks a piece down, it's Joseph's turn. John, look at me. If you do it again and you don't take turns, Mommy's going to put the game away. Poor Joseph, Mum. You started off perfectly there. You explained the rules of the game, said they had to take turns, and then John decides he's going to just, like, completely wreck the whole thing. And Mum's going to take the whole game away because of it. You could have sat down with him, but don't treat him the same or discipline the pair of them for one child's behaviour. <laughs> Listen to me. Do not get up and do not move this chair. Do you understand me? John. Sit down. <laughs> All right, I'm calling a super nanny. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. You're never going to get your son to sit on that chair. Don't pass the buck. Here again, Joanne, a little bit of anxiety there about him getting off and you having to place him back on again. John and Joseph are always going to test you guys. So if they continue to get off the chair, you place them back and say nothing. That way, the child knows that every time they think about attempting to get off the chair, they're going to have to go back. And that is a circle that you need to break. So today, let's tweak all the stuff we've seen here. I will be working with you throughout the day on making that happen for the pair of you. All right? Okay. Let's get busy. Watching a DVD today with Joe was an eye-opener. Some of the things that Joe has told us, I never knew before. We're just going to have to work at it and uh, take one day at a time. We'll have to look at it that way. Baby steps. Joanne, as much as a mother, she finds it very cute to dress John and Joseph alike. It's important that John knows what he likes and Joseph knows what he likes so that they can get a sense of making decisions for themselves. You can try and put them in different things. What it will do is it will open your mind up a little bit and then you'll think, that colour might look nice for Joseph and that colour might look nice for John. And, and in that, you will find identity in the little things that they like that are separate for their own personalities, really. Oh, OK, here you go. Look at these big boys, Mummy. Good job. <laughs> jump, 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 Good jump, job. Jump. Okay, you want to try and put your shirt on? Look your at you! This is not about me telling Joanne how she should dress her children, but this is about challenging Joanne to just start seeing them separately as John and Joseph and not as the twin boys. Yeah, yeah boy! Give yourself a clap! Yay. Good job, buddy! She did explain that they're three years old now and they need to start creating their own individuality, and it's something I'm definitely going to start doing. And what are you going to build? I think the new routine is wonderful for uh, the children, but I'm still skeptical about whether or not this is going to work for dad's work schedule. <laughs> hey, I want to know how many calls I've got that are missed. The kids will be going up to their sleep soon, so I think you should put your phone on. <laughs> the ramp itself. Get off. Joanne doesn't feel like she could trust anybody else to look after her children, and she feels that it's her husband's responsibility to do so. 17 missed calls. In a couple of hours. Unbelievable. And so I pulled that aside and said, look, let's talk about 
the possibility of you getting some help. Do you think we could have a conversation with Joanne and uh, maybe suggest that in the future maybe somebody could come in and just help you like a, like a mother's help for now? Absolutely. That would be terrific to have somebody in the house with me, working with me, where if I have to uh, take a phone call, I have to do something, I have help. I like the fact that you're going to bring it up. <laughs> so, well, actually, that was the last thing oh, you're going to bring you. it up. But I'm going to back you up. I think the important key with this whole mother help situation with Joanne is to make it clear to Joanne that a mother's help would be assisting dad in looking after the children. And so, just before dinner time, dad pulled Joanne aside. I wanted to talk to you about bringing in somebody during the day to help myself out. Uh, maybe a couple hours a day, maybe one or two days a week to start out with something along the lines of a dad's helper. I'm not, I'm not talking about my leaving the home, but just somebody here to help out with dressing the kids or to watch the children while I fix lunch or something like that. And we thought it would be a good first step for you as far as trusting someone else in the home or around the children. So what do you think? I'll try it. That was easy. Joanne was very receptive. She shocked me. Your wife just said, I'll try it. Yeah, open your eyes and give your wife a big hug. Okay. I mean, she has just come seriously far. I definitely realized that he's also working from home. And uh, to have someone here to help him will be helpful for all of us. Right now, it's play, OK, with the kids. We'll have some silly daddy time. Now that Joanna's agreed to get Dad the help they need, I went over and managed play with Dad again. So he really enjoys the creative playtime he has with the kids. We're all going to dive into the <laughs> space rocket because we're going to go up into space and then we're going to look for the aliens. Can I come in? Oh, we're going to fly to the moon. Ten, nine, eight, seven. And the engines are going. Blast off! Gonna, we're landing. Hold on, it's gonna thump. We're on the moon. Anything moves, zap it. During reinforcement today, Joe had me playing with the children and pretending that we were on a spaceship and we were flying to the moon. Don't you have to climb it? There's one! Get him! She asked me just to let myself go and I had a good time. It was fun. The kids enjoyed it. Get him! Can you say goodbye to Joe? Joe's just going home now. When I first met the Burnett family, the house was very hectic and very chaotic. Bye bye. bye. Take care. Can I have a hug? Bye bye. Ooh. 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 Bye bye, darling. Bye bye, bye, -bye darling. I miss Jojo. Mm. Bye bye, darling. Joe, bye, Joe. take care. Thank you. Thank take you. Take care. You're more than welcome. Bye bye. Oh. bye, -bye. Michael, keep up the good work. Okay, Take thank care. you. You're more than welcome. Thanks Take for care. Thank You're more than welcome. They were a family that both worked, and to find that balance was a big maze for them. When I walk away from this house, I know there are children that are a lot happier, that are not crying because they're bored, and parents, parents that are happier with the balance of what they've achieved. The specific changes I've noticed in John and Joseph is less cleanliness, less whining. Uh, they're, not, they're not looking to be held every day, all day. <laughs> now I think that we're going to be able to deal with the discipline, the chaos, the baths, like everything throughout our entire day. I think we're going to be able to deal with it more. They have a nice nap. The most significant thing that I have gotten is my wife has actually let her guard down a little bit. She's willing to allow an outsider to come into the house and help us out. And I'll be able to get my work done during the day. I think the kids are truly happier. Hey, for Joseph. Joe is genuine. Joe is the real deal. That Joe cared about my family. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know with the routine and the schedule, it makes it easier for me, a little less to do at the end of the day. I see a household that was once crazy and chaotic, and I think Joe has turned it around. 
I foresee good things for the Burnettes.